This video focuses on references in ICE. References are the names that you use to specify attributes in ICE trees. They are used when getting and setting data, as well as to specify shapes to instantiate, to specify geometry to query, and so on. In fact, it's impossible to do anything in ICE without using at least one reference. Let's start by looking at a simple example. This scene has a couple of mesh grids that share a null parent. Each of the grids also has a weight map. The blue grid has a simple ice tree that deforms it by adding a vector to its point positions. Here in the tree we have a simple reference, blue grid dot point position. It consists of the object name, followed by a period, and then the specific attribute name. Many of the attributes that you work with in ICE follow this basic pattern of object.attribute. Like other names in Softimage, references are not case sensitive. You can use lowercase p's in point position, and the tree still works. In some cases, references are more complicated than simple pairs of names. As an example, let's get the values from the grid's weight map and use them to drive the y value of the vector. So now, there's a bulge in the form of the weight map. The reference to the weight values is much more elaborate than just the object and attribute names. We have the object name blue grid as before, then CLS is the cluster container. After that, there's the name of the specific cluster. In this case, it's the default name weight map CLS, but the cluster can be renamed in the scene. Next, weight map is the default name of the weight map property but it can also be renamed. And finally, weights is the actual attribute that we want to get. You can also get long references similar to this on other cluster properties, like envelope weights, texture projections, texture maps, and vertex colors, as well as for individual parameters of object properties, like kinematics. Now at this point, the tree has three references to the blue grid. One is used to get the point positions. Another is used to get the weights. And the third is used to set the point positions. If you wanted to reuse this tree with a different object, you'd need to change the reference in all three places. But one nice thing about references is that you can build them by connecting in-name and out-name ports. This is called daisy chaining. That means that you can break a reference into two parts, one to get the object name, which can be reused, and another to get the attribute. So get a reference to just the blue grid object and connect it to the first get data node. It turns red because it concatenates the two references. So it's now trying to get blue grid dot blue grid dot point position with blue grid appearing twice. Fix it by removing blue grid from the beginning of the point position reference. You don't need to worry about whether or not there are periods at the beginning or end of references when you daisy chain them. It works either way. Now do the same thing to daisy chain the weights reference. For the set data node, you could daisy chain just the blue grid reference if you want to use the same set data node to set other values on the same object. But since you're only setting one attribute, you can daisy chain the whole reference to blue grid dot point position and clear the reference in the set data node itself. Now you can reuse this tree with different objects by changing a single reference. So it's easy to switch from the blue grid to the red grid and back again. But what about specifying a different cluster or weight map? Remember that objects can have multiple clusters and weight maps, which can each be renamed. You can isolate the reference to the cluster and map using three separate get data nodes. One to get the cluster container, 
another to specify the cluster and weight map, and the third to get the weight values. Now you have isolated the references that might need changing in these two nodes, the object in this one, and the cluster and map in this one. So, it's easy to change either one independently. You can make a compound and expose just those two references for convenience. Select all the nodes and then right-click to create a compound. Expose the reference to the object and the reference to the cluster and map. Right-click to edit the port properties and create groups to label the references for clarity. Now you have a compound that exposes just those two references. If you also expose the inname port, then you can clear the object reference and drive inname using another node. This lets you reuse the compound as part of a larger tree or compound that also does other things to the same object while using just one reference to it. Empty get data nodes like this one are very useful for passing references inside subcompounds and getting multiple attributes. In addition to daisy chaining references, you can use tokens to make trees and compounds more portable. Tokens are special keywords that you can use in references. The most useful tokens are self and this, but there are others too. Self and this are equivalent, and both refer to the object that has the ice tree directly in its operator stack. In this case, that's the blue grid. You can use self or this to create compounds that automatically affect the object they are applied to. If you don't want your compound to ever affect anything else, then you don't need to expose references to self. However, if you do expose references to self, then you can create compounds that affect the object with the tree by default, but can easily be changed to affect other objects too. There are a couple of other tokens that are available. The this parent token refers to the parent of the object with the tree. In this case, the null is the parent of the blue grid, so the this parent token lets you get attributes on the null, like its global transform. The other available token is this model. It refers to the model that contains the object with the ice tree, if there is one. If you add the null hierarchy to a model, notice that the this model token is automatically added to object references. If you remove the this model token, the node is in error. When objects are in models, the model must always be specified. Of course, you can use the explicit name of a specific model if you want to. That's useful on the rare occasions that you need to refer to a specific object in a different model. But it's better to use the this model token whenever possible, so that the reference is correct no matter what the model is called. So that was a close look at references. To summarize, You've seen how to specify attributes on objects and clusters. How do daisy chain references for improved flexibility? And how to to use tokens like self for maximum portability.